Hey folks, I will share with you today something that feels completely illegal to be honest. This is my entire content pipeline from video creation all the way to the creation of the individual posts on Instagram, Twitter, threads, LinkedIn and every other place you can imagine. This whole thing starts with me recording this video. Now I'm gonna take this video I'm going to take a transcript from this video and we are going to run through the entire pipeline of how this transcript with the ideas inside it are transformed into posts on different social media. You will see it with your own eyes. We put a lot of work into this particular system and I do hope you like it. Cheers. Okay, so let's go. First of all, let me explain to you high level what you're seeing and what data structures we are using. In this short presentation, we're gonna have on the right hand side, NA10 with the workflow itself. And we're gonna see how this is going to execute with all these different agents. But if it seems too technical, ignore it. And let's go to the actually useful part, which is over here in Slack and over here in my actual physical folder. Now, Slack is an interface with this agent and it allows to configure certain stuff and it's just to make it easier for you to approve certain posts and process certain content. But basically, all we're going to do, we're going to take this transcript that we just saw me record and we take the transcript of this actual little video and we're going to have this agent take whatever insights it can find and transform it into a variety of different formats for various systems with my tone of voice that I can control and that I have actually defined, which we will take a look at right here. And with the style of the appropriate platform and with the awareness of my previous posts, with the status updates in the database and all sorts of other helpful items of this workflow. Again, I want to go through in a little more details, but at the end of the day, what will happen is that in addition to this transcript, we're going to get generated content folder. And within this generated content folder, a whole bunch of different formats of the content that have been created from just text to PDFs to images for posting on Instagram and things like that. This is mostly text for different platforms, plus PDFs and images. I'm showing you that on an example of the project that we have already done. I just posted a video recently about the Cornelius part uh, three. It's a second brain system. And now we're gonna have a demo of this content agent and we'll see what it's gonna do. It is also Cornelius because it's the same agent that helps me in Cloud Code to actually send this content to different platforms. But I guess let me walk you through the entire workflow and how that works and show you the actual demo. And then if you're interested, I will explain how this system actually functions and why we made certain design decisions. But in order for me to get started, all of, you know, that's all I needed to do. I put transcript MD in the folder for the content on Google Drive. And this guy already is connected to Google Drive. And so really all I need to do is to click this button, execute now, that's for manual start. And as you can see, the next thing I get is this little message over here. Basically what it's asking us to do is asking us to select a folder and confirm which one we're talking about. It opens up this little dialog. And I'm selecting this content agent demo folder. As you can see, this is literally interface from NA10 itself, but uh, that's for simplicity. There are many other ways to do it. It can be done in Slack confirmations or in something like that. But now take a look at what happens over here. The workflow is running and it's extracting insights from the content. It already pulled in all the different files necessary for this workflow and it will take quite some time for that to execute usually well seven ten minutes maybe we'll come back while it's running to show you the progress and what is happening it already made a couple of md files with the posts 
If you remember when we launched that, we used the manual mode, but that's more for demonstration purposes. In reality, what we use is we use this auto start mode, as we call it, when every day it basically looks for new folders over here that already have a transcript, but that do not have yet the generated content section. And it basically automatically picks them up and processes through the entire pipeline to create necessary content. So in the beginning of the day, I have all this content prepared for me to review, change and schedule into my social media. Okay, here we go. I just got a notification from my content agent. That's how it usually happens that I have created these six items of content for you for the repurposing and it gives me a link to Google Drive, but we really have this folder already open over here. So there's no need to go anywhere else. And if we look at the output of what is happening there, you can see there's a bunch of files. It's a community post, LinkedIn carousel folder over here, which we will look at newsletter post, text post, Twitter post, and LinkedIn. Now, let's take a look at what it has actually created. I'm just going to open text post and see what it shows us, considering that I gave it like a paragraph of content, and that's it. Random acts of content lead to random results. Stop waiting for creative inspiration, treat content like an operational process, build a pipeline, synthesize your ideas, turn chaos into predictable value. That's actually okay for this little input that I provided. It was a little more verbose on the newsletter side, relatively okay, I think, on the Twitter side. So basically what it says is your content is inconsistent because you are treating it like art, not factory, blah, blah, blah. So it basically turned it into a sort of a little bit advertising kind of text. But all of that is something that I can regulate as much as I like, and I will show you exactly how to do that. Right, so we have tweets and we have LinkedIn posts. And I think it gives me three options of the LinkedIn post right now, and I will be able to choose out of them. That's intentional. And with some other posts, it also creates several options of the post we can look at. If we like it, great. If we don't like it, Later in the pipeline, I will show you how to change that to what you actually like. The most interesting part is this images and PDF that it created. Both are identical. It's just that PDF is used as carousels on LinkedIn and images are used as Instagram posts, for example. What I want you to pay attention to now is that it's not just obviously relevant to the post and what we're talking about there, content pipeline and ideation engine. Then it has my fixed slide at the end with the picture and the company reference and stuff like that. It looks good. What I'm saying is like every time it's different and a bit unique, but it follows consistent theme, graphics design, themes in the styles of the images that are used and the closing slides. All of that I can control and I will show you how to do that. And that's the most interesting part because that makes this agentic system actually work as it's supposed to. And then we have the same in the form of the actual slides. Now, I want to tell you a little more about how this system is working and how it is designed. And that's what we're going to focus upon. I came back to the folder on my personal brand, as you can see here, and I have a bunch of folders inside of it that we're working with. And I want to show you a structure of this folder and explain it a little bit because it is actually important because this guy on the right is relying heavily on the folder in Google, on Google Drive. Again, what is kind of important to understand here it doesn't matter at all if this is a Google Drive or it's any other drive or it's a FTP server or API server. It doesn't matter. Integration is like, it's nothing. What is important is that it can be connected to any of those data sources quite easily. Again, we're using NA10 for that. So let's go back to the folder. And a few important items over here are this content folder and prompts folder. There's a bunch of other stuff that you can see here, which is relevant, but we're gonna be talking today mostly about these two, the content and the prompts. So on the content side, as I showed you, we have folders for month 
And in the folder for month, we have different projects that we're working on. This month, we have basically one project that is live and another project that we're working on right here, right now. Within this project folder, there is a transcript MD and transcript is named the same exact way in every folder so that basically agent on the right knows that this is how the files are named. And if you find a folder with this kind of file, that means that you can trigger your processing and generate all the rest of the content. Now, and the results, of course, like everything is going to sit there. And then if we look at the prompts, that is a much more interesting folder to me because you can see over here that when the agent starts, it loads all sorts of information from Google Drive. It also loads some stuff from GitHub, like the system prompts and the rest of that. But importantly, it is fetching all these different files and then it's using them in the process, in the pipeline with different agents. And yeah, you can see there's a bunch of stuff, but most important things I want to pay attention to are the following. It's a tone of voice profile. It's basically a long text file in which we have defined the tone of voice that I will be using in the content that I have. And as you can see, this is specifically LinkedIn tone of voice. So this is what we kind of created for this platform. Every platform has its own tone of voice for Twitter, for example, this is the tone of voice profile for the long form content. We can have any number of those tone of voice profiles and switch between them when we choose so. And really my work goes into creating and refining these individual tone of voice files and other files in this prompts folder so that the performance of my agent got better every time. Now, a couple of other important things over here. I also have a little prompt for YouTube thumbnail visual guides, even though I'm not doing a great job with that. I need to improve that. Then we have style guides for the carousels. Note that these style guides describe specifically what we want to use in the carousels and how we want to format it. And it allows you to define and control your brand style and keep this brand style consistent across a platform, which is really the key. What else? Yeah, carousel template guide, a couple of HTML templates as well that it can use. And yeah, I think this is the most important part. And at this point, I want to switch to actually showing you how to use this content and how I use this content using a completely different agent. This is going to be a bit technical, but try to bear with me. Now, this is what we're switching to. I'm going to move it to this desktop. And we're going to put it, say, over here instead of Slack. This is the agent that I'm talking about. And if you're not familiar with Claude Code, it's basically a terminal-based agent that works like your chat GPT, except for it has an easy way to configure a lot of customizations and tools that I need to configure and to operate with the context that I give it. This particular agent that I have over here, which I still call Cornelius, despite the fact that Cornelius is more like a second brain management system, that's towards a different video. Right, over here, I can use it in order to look at the content and understand what has been generated and help me schedule and post this stuff through the service that is called Blotata which is this cross-posting service where I connect all of my different systems like LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and threads. I have this calendar here, and what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to schedule an Instagram post, for example, with those carousels and post it right away. So let's do it. This agent is already in context of the Eugene personal brand folder. I can just give it a folder path. I'm just going to copy it text files and images in this folder and let's prepare Instagram post out of the images for the carousel there. It actually agent is supposed to know the structure, it knows the structure of how this is organized. So it would probably just go ahead and do all the right things. It's all right. So it's gonna view other things. 
What it needs to do now is it needs to upload these images to different service through the MCP. Forget the details. It's doing the work to upload those posts into Blotata, which is what is going to post this thing out. Right. Well, it has some instructions on how to design this Instagram carousel uh, post and what to do with them specifically. Okay, now let's schedule this post one minute from now using Plotato. So yeah, with this setup, I can show you a little bit how this works on a high level. So it first of all starts with me recording a video. It's just something I talk about, something I have researched. I have a whole separate pipeline for the research, watch another video. Now this video transcript ends up over here. That's the place. What happens after that is that this guy picks up the job. It uses the transcript and the tone of voices and other prompts from over here, from the prompt section, in order to make nice content the way I like it. Now, when this one is done, it outputs all sorts of files. And these files are stored in this generated content folder. So what we have this guy on the top left to do is to take those files, process them, and then post this thing to over here, which is this Blotata platform that can send and schedule it to all sorts of different places. Now, it says that it finished, and let's take a look if we still have a chance to see this post. Nope, nothing is scheduled. There's a good chance it actually was posted because I just asked it to do it. Yes, I asked it to do it like one minute <laughs> ahead and it did. And this is like literally my Instagram with the actual post that just happened. Now, as easily I do the posts to YouTube, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, to other places. Okay, folks, if you want to take a look at the quality of the content that the system is producing, you need to go to my social media and probably half the posts there are produced with this system. I do my job by recording the videos and producing content this way. And then I expect this system to take care of the rest of the repurposing. My idea is to be able to focus in one place and then let the system do the rest.